Hey guys, it's Joe from the S4 Aviator YouTube channel here, back with you uh, with two topics we're going to talk about today. One of them was uh, specifically requested by a subscriber, um, and the other one kind of follows up on that question just a little bit. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about um, are the operating costs associated with specifically the 414A. Um, these vary a little bit between the twin Cessna models, depending on... Uh, which engines the airplane has. So again, based on our last video, when we took off out of Naples, we talked a lot about the differences between the 414 and the 421. So we talked a lot about different engines, things like that, and how they're gonna make a difference in your operating costs, specifically when it comes time to overhaul the engines. But uh, so the purpose of this video is just to give you a rough idea of what the operating expenses look like and what it really costs to own an airplane like this. These are not to be considered exact figures, so to speak. Uh, so I'm not giving you, you know, dollar for dollar actual amounts. Uh, this is a lot of these things are going to vary depending on economic times and, you know, where you're geographically located, things like that. But uh, this will give you a really good idea of what to expect uh, in terms of the cost of owning an airplane like this. Um, so this was specifically requested by uh, one of our subscribers. So out here at the airport today, doing a couple of post-flight items after one of our trips. So, uh, just thought this would be a good opportunity to come up here and make this video for you guys. So the first thing we need to talk about when we talk about operating expenses, and there's a lot of people out there on YouTube that are giving um, good insight in terms of what it really costs to own a specific airplane. I've seen some people do it. Uh, a lot of guys do it for 172s. It's a very popular first airplane. So understandably, a lot of people want to know what it costs to really own an airplane like that. And that's a great question. Uh, I've seen some Bonanza owners do it. I saw a guy with a Baron did it. Um, I haven't found anybody out there that's done it with a 400 series Cessna yet, but the first most important thing you have to talk about when you're talking about operating expenses is how do you calculate them? So, um, for example, I saw a video where a gentleman was discussing the ownership costs associated with owning a Cessna 172, and one of the components, he did an excellent job breaking down what the actual operating components are in terms of what, your, what type of costs are associated with it. Uh, but at one point, he said that the um, he had an interest-only loan on the airplane, and so um, the actual uh, finance on the airplane only cost him $100 a month. And that's a little bit misleading, uh, only because in an, in an interest-only loan, you're, only, you're doing exactly what it says. So you're only paying the interest on the airplane, and in actuality, you know, the bank owns the airplane, you really don't. So if you were to continue to pay that $100 a month to the bank every single month, you could do that for 10 years, and 10 years later, you're still gonna owe the same amount of money on the airplane that you did the day you took out the loan. So that's a little bit misleading. Um, and I'm gonna try to be as objective as I can here. I don't wanna mislead anybody. Um, we're gonna have to make a couple of assumptions to, to really give you, uh, to give you numbers. So we're gonna have to assume the cost of uh, 100 low lead, which is gonna vary greatly depending on where you live. Uh, especially if you're over in Europe. I mean, 100 low lead, I don't know exactly what it costs, but I know in some places it's over twice as expensive as it is here in New York. And unfortunately, in the great state of New York, we have, specifically in the Northeast, we have some of the most expensive avgas in the entire country. So um, we're going to talk about a couple of different ways you can calculate operating costs. We're going to talk about with or without engine reserves. That's a really big one when people talk about what it costs to own an airplane. Um, are, you know, are you factoring in engine overhaul reserves? Are you factoring in prop overhaul reserves? Do you calculate the cost of your uh, oil changes as part of your hourly operating cost to the airplane? Um, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, it's an oil change, it's a pretty insignificant cost. But with these engines, you really need to do 25 hour oil changes. I don't know too many people out there that run air engines that, like this that do 50 hour oil changes. I know that uh, Continental says you can. I think that the likelihood of your engine's making TBO on 50-hour oil changes goes down substantially. 
Uh, and if you reduce that to 25 hour oil changes, uh, I think you'll have much better luck with the engines. It's the cheapest insurance you can buy for engines. It really is. I mean, the oil is the lifeblood of the engine. So 25 hour oil changes seems to be uh, the way to do it with these motors. Um, so engine reserve is a big one. Are we factoring in debt services? Do you owe money on the airplane? So, and, and more importantly, how many hours a year are you fly in this airplane? Because that's going to make a huge difference in, in what your actual annual ownership costs are. So, the first thing we're going to talk about are the DOCs, which are the direct operating costs. So, the only two real DOCs on an airplane like this are the fuel and an oil change reserve. Those are the only two real direct operating costs associated with an airplane like this. When you start to get into turbine equipment, uh, specifically jets, you start to see a lot more in terms of uh, what, what's factored into your direct operating costs. But for an airplane like this, it's fuel and an oil change reserve. Um, so we're going to assume five, uh, $5 a gallon, five US dollars a gallon for 100 low wood. That's about what it is up here. It's actually a little bit more expensive than that at our home base. Right now it's about five and a quarter. But uh, $5 an hour is a nice easy round number to use. And we're going to assume for all of everything we're going to talk about today that we're flying this airplane 100 hours a year. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty typical for an owner-flown airplane. That seems to be the round number a lot of people like to use. So we're going to talk about all, everything today in terms of 100 hours a year of operation. Um, and then there's a few things that are going to change if we increase that number. So obviously, if we fly the airplane 200 hours a year, the DOCs double. And um, then we have to factor in other things. If we're going to fly the airplane... Uh, 200 hours a year, then we have to start looking at things like doing a 100 hour inspection, uh, which, you know, if we're flying 100 hours a year, we're just doing an annual. So there's a lot of things we have to really think about here in terms of anything beyond 100 hours, but 100 hours is a really good round number. So, with that being said, so the airplane burns about $200 per hour in fuel. A uh, good round number, as we've talked about in the past, is 40 gallons an hour. We fly the whole airplane in pounds, but in terms of a gallon amount, um, 230 pounds an hour, 40 gallons an hour. Uh, at about five bucks a gallon is $200 an hour in fuel. On top of that, you have to look at your oil change. So, you know, what is the, what is the cost of a case of oil going to be? And then we take the cost of the case of the oil, uh, we take the oil filter, the crush gasket, which is wonderful 25 cents. Uh, so the crush gasket, the oil, and the oil filters times two, and then we divide that total cost, and that gives us, and you know, we, we divide that total cost by 25 hours, and that'll give us our per hour um, oil cost for our oil change. So we have to factor in $200 an hour for fuel and then another $25 an hour on top of that as our oil change reserve. So in theory, if you were to put $25 you know, in a bank account or a piggy bank every time you flew the airplane for an hour, so every hour that went by you put $25 in it, after 25 hours you would be covered for your oil change. So that's the way that we're going to look at it. The real meat and potatoes here are the fixed costs. So this is really what I think everybody wants to know. What are the fixed costs associated with owning the airplane? Now the fixed costs, just so we're all on the same page, the fixed costs in an airplane are the things that you're gonna have to pay for no matter how much you fly it. So if this airplane were to sit for the next year, all the fixed costs would, not, would still be there. The fixed costs you're gonna pay whether you fly it or not. So the fixed costs are things like an annual inspection, hangar rent, uh, unforeseen maintenance items that are going to come up because I can promise you owning any airplane but especially an airplane that has complex systems and more going on that periodically throughout the year you're going to need to spend some money on un unscheduled maintenance things that have come up along the way so the first thing we'll talk about uh, with this airplane uh, in terms of fixed costs is the annual inspection I have seen people talk online about this airplane and they talk about two and three thousand dollar annual inspections on this airplane you can't do a legitimate annual inspection on an airplane like this for two or three thousand um, dollars. I mean that that ultimately comes out to, I mean twenty or thirty hours of labor, and it's just not going to get. It, you can't possibly take care of all the items that need to be taken care of in twenty or thirty hours of labor. It's just an unrealistic figure. So, a safe number to use and a realistic number. I mean, what you can actually expect to pay for an annual on an airplane like this is roughly between ten and twelve thousand dollars, and that's that's an annual. That's a thorough annual. And that's before any of the squawks. So we're talking ten to twelve thousand dollars for a thorough annual inspection on the airplane. Uh, the recurring items get taken care of, but zero squawks. So then you need to add to that uh, anything you find in the annual that needs to be taken care of. And this is going to vary a little bit based on how you conduct your annuals, uh, who does your annual, and ultimately what you find at your annuals. But if you do really thorough annual inspections, especially early in your ownership of the airplane. Um, the annuals that follow tend to be more predictable. So if you 
work out all of the gremlins and really get the airframe right in the first two or three annuals and get it and get everything perfect, then the annuals become much more predictable after that because every time you open the airplane up every year, you know exactly what to expect. The next thing is insurance. Uh, so insurance for this airplane part 91 is going to be right around $8,000 a year. Um, some higher, some lower. Um, lower is, I mean, $8,000 a year for an airplane like this is a pretty reasonable insurance rate for part 91. When we get into part 135, insurance gets much more expensive, um, just from a liability standpoint. So $8,000 is a really good conservative figure for 91 insurance on an airplane like this. I would say for part 135, no less than $16,000. I would say double, double it, and that's about what it's gonna cost you to insure the airplane part 135. I mean, there's some advantages to that. If you're, uh, you know, if you're qualified and you can get yourself set up on a 135 certificate and fly the airplane, then a lot of people with airplanes like this like to charter them uh, in their own time to offset the cost of ownership. And it's a fairly simple breakdown to figure out how many hours a month you would need to charter your own airplane to effectively offset the entire cost of owning it. So that's another thing to consider. Um, the hangar expenses. So this is probably the one that's gonna vary the most in terms of, of fixed costs because hangar expense varies geographically more than anything else, uh, more so than fuel. So, I mean, you may be able to find, I don't, I've never really been down there, but you may be able to find down south a hangar big enough for this airplane that suits your needs for four or $500 a month. Um, some places you might be talking two or three thousand dollars a month, and it depends on what kind of hangar. So do you have your own hangar um, where you know you can you know bring your tools in and it's your own private hangar, or is the airplane in a community hangar? For an airplane this size with a wingspan this long, which is usually unfortunately with an airplane like a 414, uh, specifically with this airplane is what costs so much is because of the wingspan of the airplane. So the wingspan of this airplane is enormous. It's 46 feet. So you need a hangar that's I would say at the very least 47 feet. I mean, it's gonna be extremely tight, but 48 feet to be safe, have a, a good clean 12 inches on either side. You need a wide hanger. So that just about rules out T-hangers for this airplane. Uh, a 310, you could put in a T-hanger with no problem. This airplane will not fit in any T-hanger that I have seen. I've never actually come across a T-hanger big enough for a 414, and it's almost always because of the wingspan. It's just got such an enormous wing on it that it can't go in a T-hanger. Um, so a good round figure to use for a hangar expense for this airplane is $1,000 a month. So you can expect to pay $12,000 a year to hangar the airplane. That's a pretty reasonable figure. The other things we need to talk about are the other required inspections. So a 411-413 check. 411-413 check is going to cost you, I and mean, everybody's got to do it. That's about $300 a year. That's not a very significant cost in comparison to the rest of the fixed costs of owning the airplane. Um, unscheduled maintenance you should budget for $3,000 a year at a minimum for unscheduled maintenance on the airplane. Um, three to five, 3,000 is a good number, 5,000 is a safe number. Just to have $5,000 in a rainy day account for unscheduled maintenance on the airplane, um, I think that that's also a, a legitimate expectation that things are gonna come up and you're gonna have to replace parts or a defective instrument, something like that. Obviously with newer avionics, that's less of a concern, but steam gauges, you know, you may have a servo go bad in your artificial horizon. You need to have it sent out. You know, that could be a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to to repair. So, uh, three to five thousand dollars is a good number when we talk about unscheduled maintenance and unexpected items. And that's about it for fixed costs. One thing to talk about really quick when we talk about hangers. An airplane like this really needs to be in a hangar. You can't expect to get into an airplane like a 414 and not expect to hangar it. So. Um, that's one thing that I would say would be very important to look into if you're thinking about acquiring an airplane like a 414, and that is before you actually get into that airplane, go to your home base, poke around, see what, the, see what hangar space and see what hangar availability looks like at the airport that you want to base this airplane at. Um, availability may, may not be a problem. There may be plenty of hangars. The, the question is, is there going to be one available that the airplane fits in uh, that meets your needs and meets your budget? So uh, I would say that that would be one of the first things I would look at if I were looking at acquiring an airplane like this for the first time would be, am I gonna have adequate hangar space for this airplane where I wanna keep it? Um, if, you, if you come from an airport that has exclusively T hangers, you may not have a hangar at that airport that's big enough to accommodate the airplane. So that's something you need to look at. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about are, and this, this is a, again, this is dependent on how you calculate your operating costs, but we're gonna talk about it both ways. Um, and that is engine reserves. So an engine reserve, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, an engine reserve is calculated very simply. So you take the overhaul cost of the engine 
and divide it by the TBO. So if it costs $60,000 to overhaul the airplane, you take 60,000 and divide it by the TBO, which on these engines is 1,600 hours. So you would take 60,000, divide it by 1,600, and that will give you your per hour cost for an engine reserve. So that means every hour you fly, you put that much into a rainy day account, and when the engine hits TBO, you have, in theory, the money in that account to overhaul the engine. So with this airplane, you would take the cost of overhaul divided by TBO and then multiply it by two, because we have two engines we need to think about. And that'll give you your total overhaul engine reserve. Now there are a couple of variables here. So what if the engine doesn't make TBO? Well, that's something we need to think about. Even if you do everything right, occasionally there's gonna be a situation where the engine needs to come off the airplane and be overhauled before you expected it to, ha uh, expected it to happen. With that being said, we need to worry about uh, a TBO to overhaul when we talk about our engine reserve. So we're assuming that the engine is going to make TBO. Now, uh, I've done the math on this airplane, assuming a $60,000 overhaul per side, which is a pretty realistic figure. And that's the, that, that it includes the, the crate motor and the labor to do it. So that's the whole overhaul all in is gonna be about $60,000. The, the engine alone from Ram, if, uh, I mean, I can't remember what it is on right now. It seems to change every year but I believe it's about uh, forty-eight dollars or $49,000 just for the engine. And that's if you want them to ship you the engine and you want your shop to do the overhaul uh, exchange. So they will uh, ship you the engine, everything you need, and a crate comes on a big big uh, semi-tractor trailer truck and they drop you the engine. That alone is forty-eight dollars or $49,000 and then you have to worry about getting the engine installed. So $60,000 per side is a good number. With that assumption being made, we're at $75 per hour all in. So for both engines, $75 an hour in engine reserve. Um, so if we add that to our oil cost, we're at $100 an hour on top of the fuel cost, everything else associated with that. But $75 an hour is our engine reserve fund. Some people like the system and they will put aside an engine reserve. Other people don't. Uh, but depending on how you, again, how you calculate your operating costs is really what makes the difference here. So we have $75 an hour for our engine reserve, and then we have to think about our prop reserve. So the propellers on this airplane are both time limited and calendar life limited. And what that means is that they must be overhauled when they reach their TBO in hours, or they must be overhauled at a specific calendar interval, regardless of time. So if you don't fly your airplane very much, it's, it's totally reasonable that you may be sending your props out to overhaul 900 hours before TBO. They have, they're also calendar life limited. Um, but strictly using our simple method from before of taking the TBO overhaul cost and, and doing the division comes out to $5 an hour for our props. So we need to put five bucks an hour in for the propellers too. So moving on to the next thing, and that is debt service. So this is something that a lot of people do not talk about when they talk about the cost of owning the airplane. And that is, do we own this airplane or do we owe money on this airplane? Um, the loan structure that we're going to talk about is going to, and I mean, I'm going to give you the all-in numbers at the end, at the end here. I'm going to give you the all-in numbers, um, assuming that uh, we do owe money, we don't owe money. I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios, but for the sake of the example, we're going to talk in terms of a $400,000 airplane. Uh, that's about um, mid-range these days in terms of asking price for a 414A. Some people are asking almost $600,000 for their airplanes, which is a little unreasonable for an airplane like this. And you can pick up, you know, 414s with, you know, totally timed out motors and original paint, original interior. The lower end of the market, you can pick them up for a little over $200,000, maybe even a little less. But, uh, so we're gonna assume a $400,000 airplane. $400,000 in today's market will buy you a nice 414 with, you know, updated avionics and good times. So $400,000 is the, the whole value we're gonna use. And uh, we're going to talk in terms of a uh, loan that is structured as a five-year loan with a 20-year amortization. To put that in really simple terms, you pay the loan off in payments and in installments as if it were a 20-year loan, and then you basically refinance it every five years. Um, that's a really, really simple way to explain that. So a $400,000 airplane, five-year loan, 20-year amortization. Uh, we, I'm using a 6% interest rate for these calculations. That's pretty typical on an aircraft loan for a dollar figure like this. And we're gonna assume that you borrow half. So we're gonna assume that you buy a $400,000 airplane and you borrow $200,000. 
with we're using those figures, we're talking about $10,600 a year that we're gonna have to pay the bank or $900 a month. So these are basically, with, with that being said, we've kind of reached the point here where we've covered everything. We've covered the direct operating costs, we've covered the fixed costs, and we've covered the debt service. Uh, and those are the three big players in terms of what comes together to really determine what the operating costs of the airplane are. So now we're gonna give you a couple of scenarios. So the first scenario is, what is the total cost to own and operate the 414A for one year, assuming we fly 100 hours a year? And the first breakdown is gonna be 100 hours a year with no reserves for the engines and no debt service. So 100 hours a year, we're not gonna put away any money for overhaul and we don't owe anything on the airplane. So with, using all the figures we've just talked about and these calculations I made from using the numbers we've talked about, just under $60,000 a year, came out to 59.5. So $59,500 a year is what it's gonna cost to fly this airplane 100 hours a year, uh, assuming all of the costs we talked about, assuming we don't owe anything on the airplane, and assuming we're not putting away engine overhaul reserves. If the engine needs to be overhauled early, we're just gonna to to figure out how to deal with it, and when the engine gets to TBO, we're just gonna assume that we have the money to do it. No reserves whatsoever. Uh, the next one is a 100 hour per year operation, assuming all the same cost with reserves for the engine, but with no debt service. So we're gonna put away engine reserves, but we don't owe anything on the airplane, we own it outright. In that situation, it's gonna cost us $67,500 a year to fly at 100 hours a year under those conditions. And the last situation uh, is the big one. The last situation is we're gonna fly the airplane 100 hours a year, we're gonna put away engine overhaul reserves, and we're gonna owe, and we owe money on it. And this is again, assuming you know, $400,000 a year, to we uh, $400,000 a year, and we uh, borrowed half. That was the that was the situation we used. So assuming 100 hours a year, putting away engine reserves, and we're making the payments based on that example structure I gave you, that's going to be $78,100 a year. So the uh, round numbers are $60,000 a year, $70,000 a year, and $80,000 a year. Um, depending on that. So 60,000 if we own it outright and we don't put money away for the motors, $70,000 a year if we own it outright and we do put money away for the motors, or $80,000 a year if we owe the bank under that loan structure and we put money away for the motors and we still fly at 100 hours a year. Uh, so under that situation, $80,000 a year is what you're looking at. So that's essentially the cost breakdown for an airplane like this. Um, again, there are several different ways to calculate your operating costs. Um, no two people really do it the same way. Everybody kind of has their way that they determine what it costs them to own it and how you own it and how you go about managing your airplane really determines what it's gonna cost you out of pocket in a literal sense every year. Uh, the engine overhaul reserve is a fantastic example of that. Some people do it, some people don't, but that's gonna make a substantial difference in, uh, in, in what, it, what it costs to really own the airplane for a year.